Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentary's Magic Stream on today, Sunday, May 16th, 2021. I'm, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese. Our cat, and... And Ivory Starlight. I said the and. You can't also say the and. You can yeah, have well, ands. And, 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 and. And, 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 and. Exactly. Oh, boy. It has been a heck of a weekend. Has it? I mean, for me. <laughs> but that's okay. It it was also exciting last weekend, too, with another successful online con under our belt, and yet another successful online con also held the same weekend as a major holiday. Oops. Oops. All right, so we're going to... Didn't we also overlap with UK PonyCon? Yes. Oops. Yeah. And oops, oops, Mother's oops. Day and... Oops All Holidays? Yeah, Oops All Holidays. That's All right, that's the name of this this one. We're going to we're going to land this next one on Father's Day weekend. Sounds good. Seems good. Okay. Um but stepping back a little bit, uh it kind of feels like we're running these things a little bit too frequently and they're not as interesting because they're run too frequently. Like even in the before times cons didn't happen this often. And okay, fine, sure. A year ago we thought there would only be like one or, you know, maybe two of these, but you know, that that aged real well. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. It aged um much less like a barrel of wine and more like a carton of milk. Yeah. But here we are. Continuing to run online events. And it's okay that they don't necessarily need to be as frequent as regular in-play meetups would have been. Um, burnout is a very real thing, and we obviously want to try to avoid that with this community. And especially with things starting to open up a little bit again, too. Yeah. So, in the interest of not hitting that burnout threshold... Um, incredibly soon, I think we'll probably hold these a little less frequently than we otherwise may have for, for the uh, remainder of the year, at least until we get into what may be actual con season. We'll see. Still optimistic, it's, but hey. It, it might be happening? Question mark? <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance? Uh, yes, actually. I think the the speculation at this point is keep an eye out for Everfree. Um, the state of Washington and theory will clear the goals that are needed to run something like that, but the convention itself, hmm, we'll find out. I need and... my conventions. I'm in withdrawal. And <laughs> while you're at it, if you haven't already and it's available, make sure you go out and get your two vaccines as it will be one of the requirements to attend the convention per Everfree's rules from what I've seen. Yes. One, so, one so. shot if you get that one. Yeah. All right. Well, with that business out of the way, uh, let's talk about the uh, the core tournament, which was exciting for a couple of reasons. Number one, we haven't had an actual core tournament outside of Coco's for a while. And two, ban list. Yeah. This was the first chance to see how the core metagame would react following the shakeup from the ban list that would have gone live just a few weeks prior. Uh, it actually... <laughs> went live like the Friday before the tournament, if I remember correctly. All right, so within a few weeks prior. Eh, I mean, it was announced like four weeks before that, as per our usual policy. But that's not the important part. What is the important part is look at all this diversity. Are, are we looking? Or are we about to look? We're about uh, to look. I think unless unless you look. want me to like in five seconds whip up a combination of all the decks at once. 
And then I just, yeah, just smush them all together into one pony head list. I'm sure that'll be, like, informative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely work. It, hey, that's... Or just rapid past. fire through all five slides. Five or six is six. six. Yeah, rapid fire through all six slides. I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, let's let's take a look at the first one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is Instagram with Wonderbolt White. Uh, those of you who have been uh, watching Instagram's prior history know that he is a big fan of Blue White. Uh, this is a little bit different than what they've run in the past, though. Uh, this focuses a little bit more on aggro and a little bit less on just being annoying with all the frightened. I see Scootaloo and I see Granny Smith and I am concerned. Don't don't worry about it. There is no need to be upset. Just accept the face-offs and the points as a result. It's fine. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. That's a cute little combo there. Let's see, and we got we got a few other of the usual suspects here. We got Ember actually to help you know, hop in in the face off and rearrange faces a little bit more to her liking. Not that she can tell them apart. Yeah. Right. All she knows is that they're punchable faces, and that's what she's there for. Yep. Sure is. But oddly enough, this doesn't run sticks, so... No, uh, it, it does not. Which is kind of interesting. A Prism Light says this is a combo deck, but that is not how this... That is not how this played out. This is an interesting hybrid of farm and control. And a little bit of aggro. There's, there's a little aggro, and I guess there's a little combo as well if you, count the, uh, if you count the Granny Smith. But you don't have cost reduction and you don't have studious, so you can't go infinite with Granny Smith without needing, like, 30 action tokens. Which is not going to happen. Which is not infinite, but yeah. Right. Right. Well, it's not infinite. It's 15. That's fair. Um, and you can't... Uh, you can't just sit here and win a bunch of face-offs and use, like, Tempest Shadow to flip Seleno over because you're not running Selena. You're running right. Wonderbolt. Because you want to defend your Troublemakers. Specifically, you want to defend Legion of Doom for as long as possible. So that you never win a face-off again. Well, you mean the opponent what? never wins a face-off again? Yes, that's what I meant. The opponent never wins. Yeah. Uh, but to Prism Light's point, uh, I believe this deck did close at least one game out by sitting there and going, alright, I got two tough questions and a daybreaker. I mean, I guess that works. I I can't I can't really argue with that. There's some cool stuff going on with that. Um and you can do the same thing with Scootaloo, which can also work well, right? And Scootaloo, while she is more expensive than Daybreaker, she also has prepared. So in a deck running troublemakers that is going to be hiding behind those troublemakers and combined with some of the defenses like Flash Magnus's shield or uh, Wonderbolt's ability, yeah, you've got you've got some some good wall potential. And if absolutely nothing else, it's yet another threat your opponent needs to answer, because uh, this has this has a fair number of pretty high value threats. It's got the embers, the daybreakers, the scoots. Not to mention, you've also got to worry about the troublemakers. And admittedly, it's only got, I think, one resource that's really problematic in the Flash Magnus Shield. Yeah. I mean, get enough points off of Crown, and maybe you could consider it problematic. Mm. 
Maybe, but Crown's also something that you could potentially answer another way if this hasn't gone fully online yet. Maybe. 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 But I've yet to see opponent who can outsmart face off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Sure. This looks big. Hugh. Hugh. There are big ponies here. All right, so we got the Pantheon here. Cadence, Luna, and Twilight. Okay. <laughs> but a new challenger has appeared. Everything icing. is icing. Everything is cool when you're part of the cake. Only if it's bought from Dairy Queen. It's a perfect day to bake a pretty cake. Different reference. Yeah. <laughs> Still checks out. So this yeah. isn't this is an updated version of Oops All Bombs, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a reanimator deck, which is just a fancy way of saying you're cheating cards into play. Looking sideways at that in my head like a catchy song down there. Yeah. That uh, is one of many options you have here. Looking further sideways at Orchard Blossom up there. <laughs> Prism Light says every time he plays Pinky, tricks he dives into her. Well, that's your problem. You're not actually supposed to play Pinky. You're supposed to discard Pinky to Cluj Town so that you can reanimate something better. <laughs> Just for Wreck, that's all she's there for? I mean, she's also another big threat, which is important. Or have Twilight out, who's just like, no. Correct. Or have Cadence out, who's just like, dear, yes. I hope you were prepared to pay three and let to, me watch, draw a card. to watch Trixie belly flop. Take yeah. a dive. So a few things that help the deck out significantly compared to earlier this meta. Um, Mimics is gone. That means that your um, events are not taxed nearly as frequently, unless your opponent is also playing this deck and happens to get a Cadence before you, in which case, why didn't you get the Cadence first? Slacker. Uh, number two, uh, less impactful now as the deck has dropped a few Troublemakers, but Meadowbrook being gone means you didn't have to worry as much about some of your entry being hit. Previously, the deck ran... Um, Rainbow Generator, but it has switched over to Rush Makeover because saving action tokens when most of the cards in your deck cost four or more is probably a good idea. I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. And the big one that definitely helps it work out quite a bit is uh, the fact that Feather Bangs is gone, and so the rapid pace with which you would need to interact and disrupt the Living to Laugh combos not necessary anymore. Living to Laugh is still out there. There are still decks that can use her. Nowhere near what could have been done before. And you even get a few new cards to play with yourself. Uh, Postal Mare is a great tool against opposing token strategies, specifically Thorax. Heat Wave is one of the best methods of immediate speed interaction and is in your second most common color and is a great choice to get back with High Alert, for example, or uh, with Miss Main. Well, Miss Main's usually bringing back in my head like a catchy song, but, you know, whatever. And even Friendship Summons is nice because now you can find Twilight, who's your most important friend there, or you can find your Applejack, Captain of the Seven Seas, to wipe the board. Or you can even find Pinky if you just need another big body, or you need a method of interacting with Troublemakers and resources. Or if you just haven't had enough icing yet. Yeah. More icing. And the problem deck got to get rid of the one orange problem that was in there and replace it with a prospecting interruption, which gives our opponent nothing for confronting. I love it. <laughs> That problem is so annoying when you're playing against a deck. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, we'll just reprint Blackmail instead. Will that make it better? Yeah, definitely, because then I can use Blackmail. No. Everyone else can, no. not you. 
not not allowed. We're just going to replace all the prospecting interruption with even more icing. That's right. That's Pinky was printed last set. Everything is icing, so clearly set 13, every card has to be named icing. Yep. I mean, that makes the flavor a lot easier. Yeah. Buttercream? Buttercream. Good, good call. No, Royal, Fondant is not icing. Fight me. It's not. I won't fight you on that. It's Play-Doh. Basically. Except Play-Doh is, like, mildly edible. Fondant is wallpaper paste. Someone was expecting frosting and was sorely disappointed. All right, next list. Twily. I'm so glad Cursed ran this list. Yep, this That's one's Cursed. Twilight. It's got Twilight, more Twilight, and Starlight, and Celestia, and more Twilight, and just a lot of purple. A little bit of orange. Is this control or not? I can't actually tell. No. This is, this is aggro. But there's so many control tools here. Which ones are you looking at? All of them. All of your events. Okay. So, Hyperbeam is resource removal. Heat Wave is just good disruption, right? Same day delivery is action token generation. Twilighting is a combination of card advantage or card filtering and action token generation in conjunction with your main. Uh, levitation Meditation is Forced Movement, and Spider Surprise and Sudden Closure are both more permanent removal, which is good. But note the two Legacy Leeches and the playset of Restricted Sections. That is this deck's game plan. It is going to play a bunch of cheap discounted events, or cheap discounted friends, and it's going to fill up its discard pile with events, and then it's going to slam you with a Legacy Leech and jump up like 8 AT and start playing 2 cost 10 power Celestias. And refill its hand as well. Yeah. That card's kind of good. And it's it turns out that Celestia, once she gets off her butt, is actually kind of a ringer. Combine that with Staff of Sakana so that your main can be Hugh and Monumental Evil just to try to make Fluttershy uh, Stunning Wonder play a little more fair. And a very low rec uh, problem deck. And you're you're gonna go you're gonna go zoomy. Zoom zoom. Well, there's that, that bit where Celestia is like jumping around and laughing. This is when you should be concerned. I think Cursed has also done a little bit of his own analysis on this. But uh, yeah, this this goes surprisingly fast, given how it looks. Yeah, Sudden Closure is just such a such a fantastic card and was even more fantastic when you had to deal with Mimics, and now you don't even have to. One of the key advantages of that, um, you do have to deal with Cadence, though. So, you know, deal with Cadence. All right, next list. Kitty. Ah, it is in fact a kitty. I'm a cat. I'm a kitty cat. I have a comment here that I would like to say, but I'm going to have to change the language somewhere, somewhat. So let's just say that this deck is proof that all cats are buttholes. <laughs> it doesn't have any winks. No, it doesn't. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure it needs the winks. <laughs> I... I'd like you to look at all of the stuff in this deck and tell me which of these things you're not going to groan 
when it hits the field. So, motivation? Motivation? No. Mm. No. Uh, so wink. motivation, motivational speech, you're not going to groan when it hits the field. You're going to groan three yeah, seconds yeah, later after. when he says pink. It takes three seconds from the time speech hits the field until the person names the color in a two-color deck. Yep. You... Element of surprise. No, it's, and it's pause this... for dramatic effect. Yeah, it's the suspense. Yeah. Winterzilla. I will not be I will not be super scrunched when Winterzilla hits the field because my opponent had to wait a full turn and pay an extra one. Mm. Okay, sure. So we found what three cards out of fifty that we're not going to immediately groan at? Uh, this is a control deck. What are you talking about? Yeah, even the problem deck, I'm going to groan at entirely. Let's let's talk about the absolute dream here, okay? You have a capper. Capper is a main that is able to uh, uh, recur a ton of cards over the course of the game, especially in conjunction with Tempest Shadow as long as you build your deck appropriately. Out of the 50 cards, including sideboard here in this list, 35 of them are even. Usually you're siding out cards that are um, even as well. The odds are things that really don't have equivalents. They wouldn't be in here unless they're, they were the best thing for it. And if they're the best thing for it, you probably have them in here for a reason. Right. So your final deck's going to have a two-thirds chance of any given card in the deck being even numbered, which means that you're going to be flipping or getting back about three cards on average at a time, somewhere between three to four. That's pretty good. You can do that a couple times a game with Tempest Shadow. In fact, you can do that an infinite number of times a game with Tempest Shadow, provided that you just keep replacing Tempest Shadow with Tempest Shadow. Look at her, she's even. So, like, that's that's fun and all. But Capper has one power on his start side, and if you flip him early to get the wreck, like most of the other pay two to flip mains, you kind of lose his whole ability. Except we have this new problem called Surprise Concert. I hope you're ready for some serious bad mannering. When you play a non-friend card, if one of your characters, if none of your characters has a color other than white, you may have one of your characters get plus two power until the end of the turn. So, let me propose this line of play to you. Okay. What's the, what's the really ugly one here? Like, you, you wait a turn... Let me play a troublemaker. Let's call it a barricade. Yeah, barricade. Sounds good. Barricade. Haha, -ha, barricade, go burr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. And, and then, then you've, hey. you've got this fun choice of, you know, so yeah, I guess there's another way you could do this. You could play, like, I don't know, maybe a motivational speech or a fire friendship and play a bodyguards. But no, no, that's not good enough. No, we're gonna play a changeling barricade and then drop a spoon. I don't, I don't like spoons. Spoon. And but then you're gonna look at your opponent and be like, "Hmm, I have a troublemaker coming next turn, and all your cards at this point in time, basically, cost more." So what you gonna do? The answer is usually cry. Pretty much. Facing, facing down a turn two spoons as an aggro player is like... Awful. That's a word <laughs> for it. It takes a little bit of... Uh, how you say? Magical happy Christmas time here. But... Ugh. I mean, if I have a troublemaker on... And a spoons in my opening hand. Even if that troublemaker is Tempest or Winterzilla, if I don't have another option, I'll probably do it. I yeah, I was about to say. I think your course is pretty much set at that point. 
I see no reason why I would not want to do that. So, yep, seems seems pretty good. Seems quite controlly. The problem deck is just as Moved. previously mentioned, full of just blah. Yeah, as uh, as Vivast uh, mentions in chat, move to scoop face. <laughs> I yep, move to scoop face. It's the worst phase. What is also especially disgusting, as you brought up, is the motivational speech thing because motivational speech is an when this card enters play trigger. And that is at the same effective timing as Surprise Concert. So, so you can, so... can do the ordering and do the power boost first, because everything's still white, and then you do the color change. And uh, yeah, that puts you uh, three and three in two colors. It's pretty good. It's in fact pretty good. No, not bad. The bodyguards, of course. Not that too is bad. The, that is the ultra disrespect. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and the rest of the problem deck is equally nasty. Uh, there's no problem in the entire list that has a confront requirement for your opponent of less than seven. Dang. Road. It is amazing how frustrating seven wreck problems feel to deal with when we just got out of the meta that had like tens. And yet. That's because in all of our hearts, all we want to do is go fast. <laughs> That's true. Do we want to talk about Best Pony? We can, we can talk about Best Pony. There's no Chrissy list in here. But there is. Is there? Oh, uh, Fluttershy. That's not... That is it's, not a, it's not a Chrissy list. It is Best Pony. I don't even need to uh, look at this to know that this is in immediately an adventure uh, legal deck. This has Pegasus in it. Right. It being it, an adventure it, legal deck means that this must be Smithers. Correct. And it actually doesn't have that many Pegasi in it. In fact, while it does have Pegasi, it doesn't have any synergy with Pegasi specifically. It has... Uh, uh, bring out your best, maybe. Unsatisfactory work, which of course only cares that you have a main, really. Correct. You know what it does have? What? The Destroyer of Worlds. Well, of course it does. You Why see those you? big eyes and you are already terrified. Oh, no, no, no. See, she's Devourer of Worlds. Rainbow Shine is Destroyer of Worlds. Ah, uh, shoot. Right. Well, okay, so th this is the gimmick here. It's like if, if you're a pony and your name ends with Shine, you're a Destroyer. Isn't there a no, Kieran that was Apple Star. Rain so. shine. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I think we, we we found our big bad for season ten. Rain shine uh -oh. burns down the world. So by ditching the Pegasus specific synergies, you get to run just some good value cards in yellow, like Brian and Trihorn Bunyip. Um, friends are always there, and obviously Shoe Shine as well. And CC and Flitter two on the team. That's kind of a new one, but it also gets you a little bit of a little bit of movement chaining. It's not quite the same thing as like Holly Dash, but still pretty good. It works okay, and I mean, you can move that card there when you move one of your characters with two or less power. Hey, so, isn't Bunyip two or less power? Mm. Yeah, Bunyip sure is two or less power, so that seems okay. And hey, Angel uh, or Fluttershy best hair day, or bad hair day, is uh, also two or less power. Who, who is that on that card? Fluttershy. <laughs> Are you sure about that? No. Okay. 
I'm disappointed that this deck does not run both. That is also a lot of two bonus problems. Yeah, it's like it wants to go fast or something. Yeah, and it wants to be rewarded for doing so. Yeah, and it's also got... Uh, there's a little bit of a Frightened sub-theme going on here, because we got those those Grogar's Lairs. And the sticks and the safety lectures. This is all fine. Especially when you consider that with moving out, some of that can turn into movement. Ooh. That's a good point. This deck is probably quite sad that it can't uh, run T-Rex Rain. You know what this deck does not like? Turn, well, two, turn two spoons. I was, I was about to say spoons. Uh, uh, name name me a deck that isn't the deck that's doing the turn two spoons that likes the turn two spoons. That spoons. likes the turn two spoons or like deals with it? Uh, either. Reanimator. I was I was thinking reanimator or Right, and you're sitting there just being like Less than three. Do I even have any of those? There's a couple, and there's not many. Yeah, so, go so. figure. Aggro deck's not liking a turn two spoons. Yeah. Um, water's wet. News yeah. at 11. Is water really wet, though? Yes. Fake news. That depends a little bit on your definition of wet. Because this is murderously more complicated than most people might think. Uh, shall we take a look at the six list here? Sure. Uh, here we go. We got a honk. Yeah. Yeah. Especially honk. since it's the best student. Honk. This, is a, cheer this is a cheerleader Don't deck, and it's amazing. Have Yona main. We still do not have a Yona main. Correct. So. There are a pair of cheerleaders. I don't see a cheerleading outfit, but it may not have had space for it. Meanwhile, um, I think there's a lot of pink staples going on in here. We got, we got the party mares, we got the sea pony, we got the bait and switch. You know, the, the mandatory professor of laughter is Mrs. Cake, though. Hmm. I mean, it's another retire engine. Uh, uh, this deck was through Animoy, and he named it appropriately, Give Me Your Friends. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's got uh, Silver Stream Cheerleader, Pinky's Present. If it could run Drinking Duo, it would, but good riddance. I'm just going to take your stuff. And let's see. It's and got then, then... a fair amount of fun things to do with your stuff. It'll retire to Mrs. Cake. It'll retire to Belly Flop. It'll retire to Bodyguards. Uh, bodyguards. Yeah, it's just kind of mean. I want to take control of the friends and retire the friends. I think that is toxic and creates NPEs. I don't remember what the follow-up to that one's supposed to be. I think it's you're both full of it, make it do something else that's cool. <laughs> you're both full of crap, make it do something else that's cool. Why don't we just make it another jar, Jar Jar? Compromise. And that's how the design process works. Uh, I think it was really cool that we could see not only a pink-white, but a white-pink deck in the same uh, tournament. And have them both be Do very different. Do different things. Yeah. Yeah, like, one's, one's hard control. This one's, this one's doing a little bit of aggro control stuff. Really more, it's just shenanigans and Silverstream complicating your life pretty much 
Didn't these two, the pink white and the white pink, go against each other and tie? Yes, they, sure they did. did. Two decks that don't want to play super fast, not playing super fast. Just sitting there being like, you know what? Let's have a rolling in the mud competition. Who can roll in the mud better? Yeah, that's an animal and bugle. And there was so, some uh, rather significant mud rolling going on. This was a this was an interesting match to watch. Animoy also had brought up several times that uh, Captain Was is great for entry in here to your off color because it can also bring back your Winterzilla, which means you actually have more resource removal than would be expected for this color pair. Yeah, it's a little bit of a. It's another one of those things where it's always a little bit of a shame if you had got to burn that as your first entry, but eh, it's not the end of the world. And oh, uh, yeah, depending on how you're getting your solar streams and sandbars out, you can actually get that back. Uh huh. Ugh. Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah, there's some janky stuff you can do. It's silly. Yeah. So, cool lists, uh, for sure. We had all six colors represented, um, even excluding the cheeky reanimator list. And we saw quite a few resources being played and not just dilemmas it's like the destroyer of resources isn't around anymore and yeah the taxer of resources it's the like there's this whole other things. it's like there's this whole other card type that's viable now and then everyone starts running school shutdown yeah yeah, but and that then, could very easily hurt you, too, so... Not if you build a whole deck around it! <laughs> build your no-friends-no-resources school shutdown list. Deal. My no-friends-no-resources school shutdown list is comprised of Twilight Sparkle Spell for that, along with three copies of school shutdown, three copies of taking care of business, and three copies of rush makeover. That's it. That's the entire deck. There's That's not a it. single other card there. That's the whole thing. I'm going to put plus one power counters on my main, and I'm going to wipe the board. I mean, sure. That's fine. Just hope that you don't get deck checked. It, it's fine. Don't worry about it. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. The rest of it gets filled in with puck wedgies. That would be so bad. So, I mean, so it's it's looking like core might be in a better place now. Obviously, this was a small tournament. It's you know a, a very small sample size, so we have to take that into account. But we saw a brand new deck that actually ended up taking first place in this Wonderbolt farm control list. We saw a few older archetypes come back, and we saw one of the least played color pairs have two appearances. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So from a... Like we were saying earlier, from a diversity standpoint, this is amazing because we don't have a field that's just full of yellow, blue, go fast, vomit dilemmas, dilemma printer, go burr. Held in check only by the combo decks. Yeah. Then the other half of the field sitting over there uh, with the boy bands on the beach. <laughs> Until Pinky's just like, that's it, I've had enough of you. So it's... It really is looking like a whole new meta. 
That's the hope. And you know what goes great with uh, with new metas? What new sets? Everything up and dropping a new set. Yeah, basically. New pones. New pone. Who this? <laughs> I. I have not seen that before. If that's not already a meme, someone should make it one. I'm I'm somewhat afraid of what's going to show up in Discord in a couple of hours. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Uh but yeah, I think uh new set stuff, huh? Wanna wanna talk a little bit about the new set stuff that we're we're looking at here? I mean sure. So, yeah. go for it. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. So, it's getting about time for another fireside chat, I think. It's a little bit off from when we did this last time, but yeah, whatever. The development cycle's a little bit shorter. So, next week, I think we're looking at doing a, a double header, another stream. That's right, two in a row. Remember I when we used to do streams every week? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think we've got this one tentatively titled Set 13, A Fireside Chat. So, if you've got questions about Set 13, maybe we can answer them. And I think we got a couple of things that we'll, we'll have to work on announcing around then. So, you might want to Might want to Look be around for that, for that one. one. Yeah, exactly. Um, are we going to plan on allowing players to submit questions through a form like we have in the past? And yeah, because they... that's u that's usually we're, a good way to do that. We we're should gonna have uh... everyone come onto Discord at once and shout all their questions simultaneously. Yeah, sounds good. That definitely works uh, quite well. I've been to cons that are less organized than that. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I can actually just get that set up real quick here. It's okay. You don't need to have it done now. But keep an eye on Discord and Reddit and Facebook, all the various platforms, for some additional. Links coming soon to get ourselves uh, prepped for that stream. There's always fun questions, um, and there are still plenty of Trixies in the set that have yet to be removed. So, oh yes, we got so many Trixies to remove. So what's the meme? Um, we can remove so many Trixies from this bad boy. There you go. Right now they're all Trixie. Are we we haven't spoiled any cards yet, right? I don't we think we have. have. Okay, then I can get away with saying that they're all tricksy. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep, currently accurate. No one can prove otherwise. Yep. Uh, with all that said, though, I think that will about wrap up our discussion for tonight. We would, of course, like to give a big shout out to all our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your regular support. If you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy what we do, please consider donating. Doing so does enable us to continue making content like this and lets you earn some great perks as a bonus. If you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, feel free to reach out to us through Facebook, Twitter, or email. If you're a patron, you can also chat live with us on Slack any day, any time. If Aura isn't up till 6 a.m., I'll be up at 6 a.m. with Dog. I was up until 6 a.m. fighting with the Raspberry Pi, and it was something incredibly dumb. Why were you fighting with a Raspberry Pi? Because I have a project. Oh, look at this. I just made a... Made the, you just made a thing? Made the thing. There you go. Made a form. You sure did. Is that a Finally, crying robot? It is a crying robot. Finally, if you are looking to watch any of our pre uh, any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them on our YouTube channel linked just below the stream. But with all that said, 
Thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary is Magic. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big T's. Our cat and... And Ivory Starlight, who should probably get more sleep on weekends. You did yeah, again. You said and twice. Or and was said twice. And, and, and. My name and, is and, 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 and. And... I really wanted you, I really wanted you to say my name is Dende for a brief moment. I don't get it. That's I because you had to watch Team Four Star. Hush, little green. The spirits are speaking to me. Are they telling you my name is Dende? One person watches Team Four Star. Yeah. All right. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.